Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at Cardano and historically, when has been the better times to be buying and not buying Cardano? So if you love the sound of that, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button down below, bell notification icon, like the video up. Let's get started. First up, quick mention, you can join the Investor Accelerator staking pool. Links are this in the description down below. You don't have to be a member of the Investor Accelerator, but I'll talk about that later in the video. If you do have ADA and you want to stake it for an annual return, go and check out the links down below. Plus, this video will help you uh, understand how to stake it. So, today's video, don't let the facts trigger your FUD. There's been a common theme of people not understanding the difference between risks and worst case scenarios and just considering all of that to be FUD. This is not how the markets work. We need to protect our risk. You want to protect what capital you're putting into the market and you want to be making very solid returns from it because of the big risks that we take trading and investing long term into cryptocurrencies. So that's why I say don't let the facts trigger your FUD. It's not someone else's FUD, it's what's in your head. The goal today, to not buy the tops, I found that to be one of the simplest reasons to not do something. Basically, if you can avoid buying the tops and buy any other time, for cryptocurrency with the potential returns that we see now, we're going to end up on top. Of course, it's not financial advice. Please do your own research and look at the statistics and the risks and the maths on the risk reward over the years that crypto has been around. But from my experience, as long as we're not buying these tops, we're going to have far, far better returns. And even if we buy the tops, at the moment, crypto is still in a mega bull trend. So we're probably going to be safe in that regard. But of course, it's better to be safe than sorry. So the goal here is to not buy the tops. What are we looking at? What does a low look like? And then what does a high look like? So if we can uh, see what's on the chart and identify what a high potentially looks like and what a low looks like, that might keep us safe from getting screwed at the top and getting too fearful for not buying at the bottoms. We've done this quite successfully with Cardano over the last three to four months since around the February top, the first top, and the videos are all on the channel if you need receipts. We're looking at tops, looking at bottoms, buying on breakouts, looking at when tops are forming again. We're just not basing everything off news announcements and getting pumps and dumps from tweets. This is being able to read a new language is being able to read a chart. So we're focusing on price, uh, sorry, pressure and resistance and support. So resistance levels comes in the form of price and in time. Time is a big one that most TA doesn't account for. You might notice uh, when people are searching and looking for chart patterns, time is kind of brushed aside. It's a very important point because that's going to allow us to understand how much longer can we expect a move to last for. Long uptrends, price and time. So we want to see resistance and support for these long uptrends. You know, how long are they going for? What sort of price ranges are we hitting? And the time on these extended moves. Patterns, we look at Wyckoff, we look at GAN and Elliott Wave to a degree. And it's not something that I look at in great detail, but I do want to understand what Elliott's wave theory is about because that also ties into GAN and also ties into Wyckoff. They've all seen very similar things on the charts, but they've expressed it in different ways, forming their own rules and ways of looking at the market. So we'll look at that as well in the chart. Energy of a market. This comes down to the players in the space, which is probably one of the most important things. It's everyone. It's you, it's me, it's big money, small money, dumb money, smart money. It's retail, mum and dads, it's um, institutions, it's everything. That's the energy. Is there energy in the market? Wyckoff, talks about that in great detail, and so does GAN. If you're unfamiliar with these people, Richard Wyckoff, William GAN, you got Elliott Wave Theory. If you're unfamiliar with them, I'm going to go through those in just a moment as well, just in a brief detail so you can get an idea of what it's about, and then we can move on with other cryptos on the channel as well. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you can be updated to learn more about this sort of trading. So with that said, let's take a look at the details of Wyckoff, GAN, and Elliott. So these guys tell us what to expect when we get reactions, when we get moves up and down, and what to expect next, essentially. So for GAN analysis, we just use simple stuff, support and resistance. GAN did decades and decades of work in the markets by hand in the early 1900s. The same goes for Wyckoff, the same goes for Elliott. So these guys have put in their 10,000 hours. They've put in more than 10,000 hours. 
this stuff worked for them and they've been very, very successful. So this is what I use in my trading because I've seen success with it as well. Support and resistance, 50% GAN range resistance card. But what we'll use is the FIB extension tool. And again, talked about this plenty of times on the channel, 100% macro price range repeats. This is in particular for Cardano, which is what we saw, what I saw back in uh, April, May time period of Cardano. I'll show you that. Wyckoff method, important, the volume is dying. Who can you expect to continue to buy the project if the volume is dropping? We wanna see volume, we wanna see energy come into the markets. Elliott Wave, I've noticed a macro engulfing candle. You guys might have seen this as well, but we'll look at that on the chart and five waves complete start of a corrective pattern so when five waves are done then we can expect a corrective pattern so then i look at the game theory crypto game theory we're looking at ada versus btc ada versus eth and ada versus usd let's check those out so first up i had gan so this is gan uh, looking at how to use the gan 50 percent retracement theory essentially long story short the area around 50 percent is a danger zone but it's also the best place to re-enter an existing trend. So it's a very important point. And if you are trading, then you'd put stops underneath it. But if you're looking for long-term investing, then these are probably reasonable areas to be buying in as history has shown for over a hundred years. These are very good areas. Yes, the market can continue further down. That's gonna be up to you how you manage the trades. That comes down to the individual. It's not something that I can answer for you on the video. Uh, again, again, angles. We're looking at time counts as well. Now it's a bit more difficult to find that because people kind of glaze over uh, time and they're not that interested. There, everyone's always interested in price, but time is going to help you out. It's going to under it's going to allow you to understand what's left in a move rather than get caught up in the hype and just continue to buy as the market skyrockets. So again, is very famous for again angles and hexagon charts and circles and squares, and essentially he's gone through everything that comes to maths and astrology. You take it for what you will, but there is a lot of uh, real truth behind all of these numbers aligning, coming together in the markets, because at the end of the day, who makes up the markets? People. People make up the markets. All their emotions, it's all mapped out in, math in mathematics here. We're going to look at Wyckoff. We know we've probably seen this many times before. This is our accumulation chart, and there's also... Uh, multiple different ways the accumulation can look on a chart. So there's not one exact way that it has to be. So that's why you've got to keep following the chart and tracking to see what's coming next. Uh, so there's there's plenty of this to, to be looked at in the charts, but it takes a lot of time to understand what you are seeing rather than just being biased and throwing this on every single chart that you see. If we're looking for a macro move, a big move, then we have to look at a big chart, meaning a long-term chart, a weekly three-day chart, maybe even a monthly, but probably not at this stage in cryptocurrency, weekly to weekly, right? This is not something you throw onto an hourly chart and then expect a move to happen on the macro chart, on the weekly chart. This is something that we covered many, many times before, but you'll see people throw this sort of thing on a 15 minute or an hourly chart and say, we've got the accumulation, we're ready to skyrocket to the next bull run. It does not happen like that. That's it, it just doesn't work like that because you need to be building up for a big move on a macro view first. Okay, so that's what we're looking at with Wyckoff. Elliot, Elliot has his waves, Gan has his sections. They all come into play here. And as you can see for Wyckoff, they have similar sorts of uh, patterns that they all look at. So for uh, Elliot wave, you have four, uh, five waves and then a three wave correction. So up, down, up, down, up. And then there's a one, two, three or an ABC corrective. So that's what I think we're in with Cardano at the moment. I think we're looking for a corrective phase and we might be getting psyched out at B thinking we're probably going up, but then we get the corrective C, scares everyone out and then we move again. These have specific rules to them as well. One to two to three to four, four can't go below one, three can't be the shortest wave, etc. Make sure you understand these rules as well. Candlesticks. Now, the bullish engulfing candle. This is on a macro chart as well that I saw on ADA. This is what we're looking at here. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, but something similar. Essentially, we want to see that this bar is engulfing this bar, in particular, the body. So the body is the colored part, and then you've got the wicks as well, which are the you know spiking down. But the close is up here for the green, and the close is down here for the red. So this is what we're looking at as well. Now, in terms of uh, Wyckoff, we cover this quite a lot in the investor accelerator. So if you guys are interested and you want to learn more about trading, in particular Wyckoff and GAN, come over and join us in the investor accelerator. Uh, link to this in the, is in the description down below. 
by all means, join us there. Otherwise, we've got the free newsletter that uh, newsletter that comes out once every two weeks. So if you want to learn more about trading, drop your email address and name. It's absolutely free. Join in on that. Links are down below. Let's have a look at Cardano. Cardano USD. So this is where we are on the price chart. Remember what we we're looking at with our GAN analysis. Support resistance. We are looking at that now. We got support at $1.05, support around $1.40 and a support around $1.80. Our 50% levels. We've seen a uh, reaction off the high. We've hit our 50%. The body has closed above it, which is a nice sign. And now we're just sort of tapering out. Should we break down below the 50%, then we're probably going to come back and test the other resistance levels. All I'm saying here is that I don't see any sign of a new move uh, getting ready to burst up to the new all-time highs. There's a lot of signs here saying that we're probably going to head a little lower. Volume is also drying up. That's Wyckoff. All right, so Wyckoff is showing us we need to get some sort of momentum going on here and we haven't really had enough time of accumulation. At least that's the way I'm seeing the market. Looking at the 50% as well, move the volume off here, drop this to this previous high, and this was just before we took off. So looking at it on a log scale, you can see that we had a very solid move out for several months and then a small correction. But at the time, it looked very, very big. So I take it off log again. That's quite a sizable move, over 50% and the market pulled up on 50%. First the bodies went under, then it started to form a higher low, and then the bodies started to close above it, and then we took off again. And so 50% is even just showing that it's working quite well in the market in this bull trend. So I've got this lodged up here, and now I'm just waiting to see whether we come back and test the $1.20 level, which is just below the $1.40 of the support here, and if we move it down to the bodies of the bar, then we come out around $1.30. So I'm not going to be concerned if I see the ADA market drop to this level. I'm probably more or less expecting it to drop here first because I think we need a test before we can head up into new all-time highs. And that is a much stronger move than heading to all-time highs straight away. And so I'm going to be way more comfortable buying my ADA at these levels and knowing longer term that we're going up to bigger and better prices than if I saw it take off from this point. Taking off from here is like a weak building structure. And I don't want that for an investment that I'm in long term. I want to see solid foundations begin. And so that's what I'm waiting for and hoping at this stage. But I, I feel like I'm seeing that in the markets now. So that's what looking at our, our GANs. We've got our 50%. We have our support, our Wyckoff, our 100% uh, range. So taking our chart off here, 100% range moves are seen quite often as the end of a run as well. So major low, major high. This is a very major low back in April. And this market ran up in one, two, three weeks, did 100% of the move that happened from March low to the February high. So it basically took one whole year to do this exact price range. And Cardano did it in three weeks. If that's not telling you something is blowing up and we're getting to an end of a move, I don't know what is. Something that took one year just did it in three weeks. All right. So... For me, that's why I called this, and again, the video's on the channel about a day or two later. You have to wait for the signs to come in, but that's done 100%. We saw another few other signs and thought, yeah, probably going to be the top for quite some time. And so far, it's turned out. It's been one, two, three, probably about four or five weeks or so from this top. And the last thing I want to have a look at is this engulfing. Check that out. Green, red, that's a bearish sign. Ada, green, red. Look, it's on a macro as well. We're looking at weeklies. We're not looking at hourlies and four hours and even daily. This is a macro move. So that's why I'm not expecting it to break these all-time highs anytime soon. If I can see this, then I'm going to feel way more comfortable when it comes to my investing. All right, quick look at the time counts. This is a GAN thing. This is a little bit more advanced, but just to show you guys, I'm looking at moves here of, say, 60 weeks. I'm just counting weeks and then dividing those into halves because like GAN talks about 50%. Most people look at price. I'm also going to look at time so I can get an idea of how far we have to go. 30 weeks. There are, I'm just counting measures here in uh, moves that I can see where I've got reasonable highs in them. You can do this all from just looking at the chart. So we've got about 66 weeks low to low, 61 weeks low to low. We've got about 61 weeks from this low to this high and then 62 weeks to low to the low. So 60-ish is coming up a lot. Split that up, 30 weeks. 30 weeks from the high takes us out to about November. So I'm just using this tool, top, there you go, 28 weeks. And I'm using 28 because there are a few other numbers here. We've got 28 low to low, we've got 29 from low to high, 
uh, 56, half of that's 28. So these numbers keep repeating in the market and that is based on humans and how humans are reacting in this market. They have about a six, seven month period that they feel something and then they stop feeling it and they stop buying. I, I can't dictate this. It's just what the data is telling me that happens in this market time and time again. That's not an exact movement like this because we see some 10 weeks down and then we see 20 weeks. But I'm just trying to get a bit of a guide of what I could expect so that I'm not sitting out here wishing and hoping and waiting for something to happen. I kind of think, okay, maybe 20 to 30 weeks is possibly what we'll see. And if we don't, then I know that there are other periods as well. You will go to 10 weeks down. Uh, and this is in a, a move that was quite strong. From the top until we broke out, that was 10 weeks. There's the real breakout bar and there was the top. And so even during a very bullish period, the market still took about 10 weeks until it broke out again. So I'm looking at anything from about 10 weeks, as you can see here, you've got nine weeks here, as I've covered a couple of nines. Nine weeks is the earliest, maybe about 28 weeks. So somewhere in this July, November period, and I see this happen across many other markets. Now I'm covering what we're looking at here. What does a low look like? What does a high look like? What am I looking for in support and resistance? GAN analysis, Wyckoff method, uh, Elliott Wave, I looked at the macros, and then Elliott Wave, five waves complete. And we're just going to put the log and then we're looking at one, two, three, four, five. Now it looks squished because of course it's on a log, but there's your four up, uh, sorry, three up, four down, five into this high, three has been bigger, four didn't reach to one. And then we have a corrective. Maybe this is corrective is over. A, B, C. You know, maybe it is. Or maybe we have a little further to go for this A, B, C. So something like a A, B, C. I don't know. I'm just trying to play with ideas that I could possibly see coming. Like I said, maybe this is over now. A, B, C. We don't know. No one knows. It's just a matter of uh, having an idea of what's coming next. So, you know, we're going through that and uh, just feeling out the market along with the rules. So that's Elliott Wave as well. We've covered all of these bits and pieces here. Now it's the game theory. Where are we at? Bitcoin, Cardano, ADA, BTC. 50% level, right? We know we're going to get some sort of reactions from it. And normally if we had this flipped in an invert, that would be a good place to buy. You know, there's our 50% level, the market's run up, it's run back down 50%, let's buy. If we happen to buy on that, this is obviously the opposite direction. So we flip it back and that would mean it's going down. That also ties into Bitcoin dominance going up, Bitcoin going up, the altcoin cycle where Bitcoin leads first, and that generally means that altcoins will bleed, as I've talked about pretty much all week on the channel. So I'll leave those videos at the end of this video as well. And if you haven't seen them, go back and check out those videos because that'll explain what's going on in the market so that you're not wish-washy and going around to different videos and trying to not, uh, not understanding what the hell is happening in the market. This is basically reading the news before it happens. And that's the way I've been looking at the markets for over 11 years. Last chart we want to look at is Cardano ETH. Cardano ETH is a bit more of a uh, stronger chart because we are holding above all of these previous highs. So Cardano might start to outpace ETH, but it looks like Bitcoin is going to have its time in the sun. If it breaks through the 50%, if ADA Bitcoin breaks through the 50%, then that's a strong move to the upside for ADA. All right, so that's something we need to keep in mind. That's why we are tracking this to see what happens from this point. ADA ETH, then that would obviously mean ADA ETH would probably track up as, uh, as well. If it's taking off against Bitcoin, it might be strong against ETH. But again, as you can see, 50%, we've hit that and we started to react from it. The other side to it is we're sitting now above the macro 50%. So this is a difficult period. But as long as we're not buying the highs, then we're probably in a safer period to be getting much better returns for the long run. Remember what we want to do here. Our goal is to not buy the tops. And as we could see from the time counts, 60 weeks coming out at the tops, as we've seen many, many times before, the prices, the engulfing pattern, these were the tops. So as long as we're not buying the tops and we're finding better opportunities, best and worst times to buy Cardano, title it something around those lines, then we have a better opportunity to be getting better returns in the long run. And so that's what I talk about often on the channel, obviously all the time in the Investor Accelerator. If you haven't already, Go and check out the Investor Accelerator. Link to this is in the description down below. For the Aussies, I'll just quick make a mention, uh, tax time coming up. If you want to get your super annuation fund into cryptocurrency, 
go and check this out. There's a link in the description down below as well. This will help you get your super money, your retirement funds into an SMSF and then into cryptocurrency. So they're offering 300 bucks free on this up until the end of June 30. Check me out on Instagram, daily Q and A's to learn more about trading. And of course, Twitter, go and check Twitter out. We talk about crypto all the time and update the charts over there. I hope you guys found some value from this and that you are doing very well in your own investing. And remember, don't let the facts trigger your FUD. And until next time, have more fun to get more done. <laughs>